I toured this last year with Better Nate Than Ever, and I toured and I do a lot of workshops with kids, these sort of master classes on both auditioning for Broadway shows and how everything I learned about being a grown up came from the theater, basically. And, um, and as I toured around, I became sort of more inspired than I ever was as a kid with what teachers do because when you work on Broadway, you work about two and a half to three hours a night, depending on if someone British wrote the show. And, um, and then you go home and then you sleep till 11 and a couple days a week, like today, there's matinees going on, a couple days a week, as you know, you have a couple shows. But it's, it's a lifestyle that has long stretches of window shopping, and that is not a metaphor. Uh, and so it wasn't until I started getting in the room and working with kids again and exposing myself to the real teachers who never get the break and who work not just five days a week, but the weekends to prepare the next week's lessons, that I became um, sort of even more inspired by, I think, those people who I had taken for granted as a kid. Let me just give you my quick version of my more extensive bio so you sort of know how I'm coming at this and what sort of some of my goals are in the sphere of education. Sherry's going to do the same and then um, and, and we want to have a conversation and then a little later on we have a special guest for you. Um, I was the last kid picked for dodgeball growing up in Pittsburgh. I was and would still be if I were still in school. I, I was a C average during the really good semesters because I was the kid who had one vision, and my one vision was, I'm gonna get to New York, and come hell or high water, I'm gonna dance on Broadway, and that was all I wanted. Mm -hmm. And the good news about that was also the bad news, because I got it. And very early on in my sort of uh, like proper adulthood, um, I moved here and I, and I was a polar bear at Radio City in the Christmas Spectacular. I like to say we dance on stage while the Rockettes change their shoes. Um, and then, um, and then I made my Broadway debut in the Bernadette Peters revival of Gypsy. So I have a couple physical examples. Um, these were just things that surprised me because when I got to Billy Elliot, I was in my late twenties, and I had been um, the very first show I ever did. I was twelve. I was in Oliver at the Pittsburgh Civic Light Opera. Rob Marshall, are you in Oliver? I've been in Oliver five times. I'm like, <laughs> no, it's, like, it's always there's show. one, and then everyone else is like, eh, Oliver. Yeah. But like, <laughs> Um, so, so I was in Oliver, and Donna Murphy played Nancy, and Rob Marshall directed it, and I had no idea. I was just a 12-year-old kid doing this production. So I came into Billy Elliot with 16 years of what I was certain was uh, I knew a lot more than the kids, and I was certain of that. And um, when I interviewed with Peter Darling, choreographer, brilliant choreographer, here was the first thing he said, and I'm going to just tell you a couple things that he, that he told us that I thought were, was brilliant. We were never allowed to tell the kids to smile. Now, the show's like full of joyful moments. We were never allowed to tell the kids to smile. And I come very much from this sort of school of dancing where the eighth show of the week at Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, nine months into the run of a flop show, right before going on stage, you're like talking about, you're talking to a guy about everything you hate about life, and then like showtime, and you see like kicks on a smile, and you kind of do it. and and and. Peter's point, and it, it's a profound one that might just sort of sound like, well, duh, was he wanted the, he wanted the kids to be authentic, and he wanted the experience to be authentic. Um, the like Snapple fun fact about Matilda is that I work with thousands of kids every year on sort of these sort of performance technique workshops, and um, every one of them is most worried about how do I get an agent, where do I get headshots, and you know when's the next bus to New York. And I say to every kid that just by being in this room, you already have more training than the girls who won the Tony Award for Matilda. Because Matthew Work, is I think direct, Matilda, right? um, his, his big thing with Matilda was he wanted the girls to be authentic and act like humans. And so often when we see these shows that star kids, they're like robotrons, and we don't believe a word about it. And so the, the British mindset that I loved and that I really picked up on was you never tell the kid to smile. And instead, the technique was dig into something real that's happened to you. What I learned on Billy Elliot was that rewarding effort and not talent is what created an environment in which the kids weren't competitive. So when you frequently look at the girl who's the best singer and say, your singing makes me so happy, it's so beautiful, it's like it's that temptation that we all have. 
and it ultimately really damaged the environment of the show when we did that. When instead we noticed the kid who had worked really hard, even if he was still falling out of the pirouettes, uh, it, it made it less difficult to maintain the show. Because on a show like Billy Elliot or Annie, which I think right now is splitting, there's two girls playing Annie, if you think competition is bad at home, the competition of a Broadway show where the boys are in the wings listening to the audience to see who claps harder and who, who gets the biggest applause is, is it can be like deadening.